Did you know robots are trying to be more like people? Scientists have been working on this for a while, creating robots named Sophia and Nadine. But these robots always seem to miss something important, the human touch. Now, scientists are getting closer to making robots look and act more like humans. They're putting real human-like skin and tissues into these robots. In today's video, we'll talk about these cool advancements in making robots with lifelike skin and tissues. We are going to talk about the world's first living robots called Xenobots, and guess what? Now, these little guys can make more of themselves. We'll also discuss what this technology could mean. So, let's jump into the video and learn more about these exciting changes. In sci-fi stories, biohybrid robots that combine living and artificial materials have played roles ranging from heroic action figures to villainous assassins. These imaginative tales have sparked inspiration for today's advancements in robotics. While we're still some distance away from having human-like robots as part of our everyday routine, Japanese scientists are making progress. They've developed a method outlined in the June 9, 2022 issue of the journal Matter that not only provides a robotic finger with skin-like textures, but also imparts water repellent and self-healing capabilities. The finger looks slightly sweaty right out of the culture medium, notes Soji Takauchi, the first author and a professor at the University of Tokyo, Japan. Since the finger is powered by an electric motor, it is also interesting to hear the clicking sounds of the motor in harmony with the finger that looks just like a real one. For humanoid robots designed to interact with humans in healthcare and service industries, appearing real like a human is a top priority. A human-like appearance can enhance communication efficiency and create a sense of likability. While current silicone skins for robots can imitate human looks, it falls short in replicating delicate textures, like wrinkles, and lacks specific skin functions. Previous attempts to create living skin sheets for robots faced challenges in conforming to dynamic objects with uneven surfaces. With this method, you need the hands of a skilled artisan who can cut and tailor the skin sheets, explains Takeuchi. To effectively cover surfaces with skin cells, we developed the tissue modeling method to directly mold skin tissue around the robot, resulting in seamless skin coverage for a robotic finger. To create the skin, the team initiated the process by immersing the robotic finger in a cylinder filled with a solution containing collagen and human dermal fibroblasts, the primary components of the skin's connectivity tissues. According to Takeuchi, the key to this study's success lies in the natural tendency of this collagen and fibroblast mixture to shrink, tightly conforming to the finger. Similar to the paint primers, this layer served as a uniform base for the subsequent application of cells, specifically human epidermal keratinocytes. Comprising 90% of the outermost skin layer, these cells gave the robot a skin-like texture and properties such as moisture retention. The crafted skin demonstrated sufficient strength and elasticity to withstand the dynamic movements as the robot finger curled and stretched. The outermost layer was thick enough to be lifted with tweezers and repel water, offering advantages in tasks like handling electrostatically charged tiny polystyrene foam used in packaging. In cases of injury, the crafted skin exhibited self-healing properties like human skin, aided by a collagen bandage that gradually transformed into the skin, enduring repeated joint movements. We are surprised by how well the skin tissue conforms to the robot's surface, remarks Takeuchi. But this work is just the first step towards creating robots covered with living skin. However, the developed skin is weaker than natural skin and requires a continuous supply of nutrients and waste removal to survive. The next steps for Takeuchi and his team involve addressing these challenges and integrating more advanced functional structures within the skin, such as sensory neurons, hair follicles, nails, and sweat glands. I believe living skin is the ultimate solution to giving robots the appearance and feel of living creatures, as it is exactly the same material that covers animal bodies, notes Takeuchi. The US scientists who made the first living robots, called Xenobots, have revealed that these tiny creatures can now reproduce in a unique way not observed with plants or animals. 
These xenobots, created from the stem cells of the African clawed frog, Xenopus lavis, are less than a millimeter wide. Initially introduced in 2020, experiments demonstrated their ability to move, collaborate in groups, and self-heal. Researchers from the University of Vermont, Tufts University, and Harvard University's Wise Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering have now uncovered a completely new form of biological reproduction, unlike any seen in the animal or plant kingdom. I was astounded by it, remarked Michael Levin, a biology professor and director at the Allen Discovery Center at Tufts University, who co-led the research. Frogs have a way of reproducing that they normally use, but when you liberate the cells from the rest of the embryo, and you give them a chance to figure out how to be in a new environment, not only do they figure out a new way to move, but they also figure out apparently a new way to reproduce. Stem cells are versatile cells that can transform into various cell types. To create xenobots, scientists gathered living stem cells from frog embryos without altering their genes. These xenobots, initially spherical and composed of about 3,000 cells, displayed rare replication abilities under specific conditions. This kinetic replication process, observed at the molecular level but never at the cellular or organism scale, allowed the xenobots to replicate. Using artificial intelligence, researchers explored billions of body shapes to enhance the xenobot's replication through a unique process. The AI devised a C-shape resembling Pac-Man, optimizing the xenobot's ability to gather stem cells and create new xenobots. The shape itself served as the program, influencing the xenobot's behavior in this surprising process. While xenobots are in early stages and lack practical applications, the combination of molecular biology and artificial intelligence holds potential for various tasks in the body and the environment. This includes activities like collecting microplastics in oceans, inspecting root systems, and advancing regenerative medicine. Despite concerns about self-replicating biotechnology, the researchers assure that xenobots are contained in a lab, easily terminated, biodegradable, and subject to ethical regulations. The research received partial funding from the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, a federal agency overseeing technology development for military applications. There are many things that are possible if we take advantage of this kind of plasticity and ability of cells to solve problems, noted Josh Bongard, a computer science professor and lead author of the study. Even though there are challenges and things we can't do yet, scientists are hopeful and think we can make robots that are almost human-like. We hope you liked this video and found it interesting. What do you think about making robots more like humans? Good idea, or maybe not so much? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section.